Welcome to the Music Shop Podcast, where we talk with music retailers from across the country about the challenges of running their business and how they succeed. I'm your host, Taylor Harnoise. All right. Thanks for uh, joining us today on the Music Shop Podcast. We're excited to have a really special guest with us today. Um, a couple of guests. We have David and Michelle from uh, Enum Claw Music. And uh, David and Michelle, why don't you take a, just a handful of minutes and tell us a little bit about yourselves and your store? Sure. Um, our store's been here for about 35 years. Uh, we bought it from uh, the previous owner about 10 years ago. We do a, the standard kind of music shop things. We uh, have retail, which does about 50%, 55% of our business. And then we have classes and we do uh, music lessons. We have about 14 teachers that teach in five or six studios in the back. Great. And then we do repairs. We do uh, rentals to the schools and to the class members and those kinds of things. Um, and then uh, that's kind of the, what we do here. And um, we've been growing quite a bit over the last little while. It's been doing quite well for us. And our, our business slowed down a little bit during the pandemic but we were able to work remotely and continue going and we've been very successful since then. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, you guys are just lo or located um, just outside of Seattle. Obviously there's a really uh, vibrant uh, and historical music scene uh, there in Seattle. I'm, I'm curious, how did you kind of get your start in the business? Were you a player? Were you a, on the business side of it? Or how did you get uh, started in mu in the uh, music I've, industry? I've been a musician since I was 12. And when oh, I was, wow. when I was 12, uh, I always thought I wanted to retire and teach music. Oh, so wow. when I retired from the business that I was previously in and I got an opportunity to buy this store. I went ahead and bought this store. And now we get an opportunity to teach and play with the kids and, you know, have fun all day long. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a blast. It's just a yeah. blast. We get to teach people how to fix instruments, teach people music, teach all that kind of stuff. And in about two years from now, I get to switch roles with Michelle and Michelle is going to be starting to take over my roles and then I'll be backing off a little bit and taking her roles and then and I'll be the manager and she'll be able to boss me around and then I'll be just teaching <laughs> for the rest of my life. I already boss them around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, hey, I know how that goes. That's uh that's <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That's and I actually, a, I don't, I have a musical background, but not in the way that David does. I was always in choir. Um, and okay. I actually, during COVID, lost my job and came in to talk with David because both of my girls were in our group band class that we have here. And oh, wow. I couldn't afford the lessons because I had lost my job and my husband had too. And David needed help with marketing. And so that's how I came in because I have a marketing background and oh, okay. I traded services to be able to let my girls go to band and fell in love with what Enum Claw Music does for our community and our kids and ended up working my way up to store manager and talked with David and Kathy and said, you know, that my husband and I were really interested in keeping this staple here in town because it has been here already 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, boy, that's a fantastic story. That's, um, that's, that's really something. Um, you, you, you both kind of come from, um, unique situations. Uh, we, we do talk to a lot of stores that, um, you know, they go, they branch out on their own. They kind of start their own thing. They're, um, uh, they're not really picking up, um, an established store. And both of you are kind of coming about that the opposite direction where, you know, the store has been in place, um, you know, as you mentioned, it's been around for 35 years. Um, and David, you took it over, um, you know, 10 years ago. So, 
Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Um, uh, what, what caused you to want to, um, kind of take over an established business rather than start your own? Well, one of the big deals was, is that I was really bored after working at computers for, for quite a while. I wanted to do something that was really fun and help the community quite a bit. So I got an opportunity to uh, talk with this woman who owned the store and the store was significantly smaller at the time that we, that I purchased it. Uh, I had far less teachers, far less business, um, had probably one employee instead of the four of us that are working now. Yeah. And, uh, it, and zero retail. There wasn't any retail aspect to it. Oh, wow. Right. And right now we have about $190,000 worth of inventory in our store. And we just yeah. hit over a quarter of a million for this year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, which is really good for our That's... our, our uh, little town has uh, about 11,000 people in it. Yeah, so you guys are doing well. We're yeah, doing that's... very well. We're marketing to, you know, everybody that we can. So it was really nice a couple of days ago, uh, Music Shop 360 helped us because we could market outside the area, not just to the small group of people that's around us, the 10,000 people that live in Enumclaw, but we could market to the people. I think the gentleman was in Illinois and bought his, his grandson a ukulele. And we've been selling on Reverb, which Music Shop 360 helps us do, which is really easy for us to pop something onto Reverb and then get the revenue back through that, which is yeah. which helps us a tremendous amount, which is a really yeah, good I'm gonna. I'm going to ask you about a number of those things that uh, yeah, that, that, that helps well. a lot. So yeah. that helps us grow the business a little bit outside what we've got, and that's what helps us a lot in the classes too, is because we get a lot of class signups from people who are excited about the classes. We'll go and we'll talk to churches, or we'll talk to community members, or we'll talk to friends, and they'll go and talk to other friends about the classes that we do. Yeah. They'll go onto our website, they'll sign up for classes, and it's very easy for them to get on and sign up for classes and become part of our community well, I mean, of players. We're one of the yeah. few places that have homeschool specific classes available. Oh, really? And we have a very large homeschool community here in Enumclaw, but we have people we had someone come all the way from Kitsap County because we were the only place that she could find an orchestral class outside of the youth symphonies. Her daughter wasn't quite ready to join the symphony yet because she didn't know, she didn't have the skill set yet. And yeah. so we have that opportunity. We have a full orchestral strings class with about 23 kids right now. We oh, do wow. guitar and ukulele as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a kind of been an interesting theme as you've talked about, you know, getting started. Um, it sounds like the education component and the music education component has really been the driving factor for, for both of you, Michelle, for being able to provide that for your, for your children and David, for you to want to be able to, to share your skill set and your, you know, your knowledge base with, with others. Um, and I think that's fantastic. Um, I, and that, that probably is one of the things that really kind of differentiates you from a lot of other, you know, retailers or service providers is really a heavy focus on, on the education piece. Um, I'm, I'm curious as you were, um, you know, weighing, and both of you can answer this because Michelle, you're currently in this situation and David, you've gone through this situation, but as you've kind of been weighing your options, um, or as you were weighing your options on, you know, um, buying the business, what were some of the challenges that you, that you did foresee? And then I'm going to ask you what are uh, maybe some of the challenges that you didn't foresee, but I'm curious kind of what, what were, uh, maybe some apprehensions or things you were worried about or things you were excited about, uh, challenges that you, you foresaw as you were contemplating buying the business. Oh, the, the biggest one is the internet. Our, our number one competitor is the internet. We can't compete with the internet. We don't have 
floor space. We can't compete outside. There's just no way to compete with the internet. We have to price our guitar strings and a lot of the commodity products at the same price as the internet. Now, yeah. if we have one off items, we could price them at a, at, at, you know, at a, at a competitive, at a better margin, but yeah. we can't otherwise. So yeah, what, that map pricing is going to dictate what you can offer at, right? Yeah. Now the map, my, map pricing is okay, but when they come, when Amazon comes in and starts dropping the price on products cheaper than we can buy them from our distributors, which yeah. they will do, then people come in with their phones, they look at the price, they barcode it with their phones. And I've watched people barcode our Kali ukuleles and look at them and go, oh, that one's this price on this vendor. Will you match it? Right. And yes, we will match it because we want to sell, we want to get it out of the store, but that could drop right. our margin quite a bit. Yeah. But what helps us tremendously is the fact that we, I always knew that having more classes and more people walking through the front door for lessons would bring people into the store and see what we've got and meet people like Michelle and people like meet people like Kat and be people like Danielle, the other employees that are here and talk to us and want to buy stuff from a local retailer. And that's what happens is people will come into our store and say, yes, I want to buy from you guys instead of somewhere else. And they'll come back and buy guitar strings. They'll come back and buy things, even though they're a tiny bit more expensive here. Yeah. And then it, it makes a huge difference to our bottom line when yeah. that happens. Yeah, you you uh, you're really kind of a step ahead of me. I mean, that was, that's exactly what I was going to ask about next. You know, you've got these big giants out there, the guitar centers, the sweet waters of the of the industry, that really, um, you know, they they gobble up obviously quite a bit of the the, the market share. Um, and for a store to survive, uh, not only survive but thrive, takes really a different level of customer service. Um, Very much. As, as I was, yeah, and as, as I was kind of you know reading about the store and everything, you, you say something really, really interesting. And this is right off your website. You say we focus primarily on our customers, not on our products. Right? Um, tell me a little bit about that philosophy. Well, it really, it, you have to focus on what the person gets out of the instrument or the, the experience. When you yeah. sit down and you talk to somebody about a guitar, you explain to them the difference between the different guitars and why they would want, you know, why, what the benefit would be of a classical guitar versus, uh, versus an uh, acoustic guitar versus a dreadnought guitar versus a orchestral versus a three quarter size versus a yeah. half size. You go through the different things and you talk to them about how it fits on their bodies and what the benefit of playing and how it feels on their body. And then they go, Oh, now I see what I'm looking for. And yeah. they feel like you're, you're paying attention to them. And yeah. I'd love to jump in here because I yeah. had zero, I had never even touched a guitar in my life when I started working here, knew nothing. And I honestly, it was just asking questions. I tell David all the time that our, our job is to fill it, find a need and fill it. And yeah. so I would ask people, I would hand them different guitars and I said, which one do you like that sounds better? Like, what do you like about the sound? Because I come from a background in um, in wood floor manufacturing. So I know oh, wow. what different yeah. woods do. And I know how it affects the um, acoustics in a room and things like that. So I was able to apply yeah. that to guitars and yeah. to the different 
types of woods, the different shape of the guitar, the tone holes. Do you have, you know, an ovation that only has the three little holes at the top? What's the, you know, and then the rounded back, how does that affect? And so that's how I was able to help customers is to get it in their hands and ask them, what do you like? How does this feel? What do you like about the sound? Because I knew nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Music Shop 360 Retail Software. Music Shop 360 helps music stores manage all the pieces of their business. It's great for managing instrument repairs, tracking inventory in-store and online, or taking recurring payments for instrument rentals. Music Shop 360 also has built-in tools for communicating with customers so you can keep them in the loop and coming back to your store. With our Reverb.com integration, you can connect your inventory to their site and expose your business to a larger worldwide audience. With everything built into one system, it makes this process seamless and incredibly easy. Music Shop 360 does all this and more. For listeners of this podcast, Music Shop 360 is offering 50% off your startup costs. Click the link in the description to schedule a demo and redeem this offer. And now back to the show. So, I mean, it's, it sounds like a really personalized, it customized is. shopping experience for, for your customers, which, you know, that's, that's the antithesis of what somebody gets when they walk into a guitar center or they're buying on a Sweetwater. It's, I mean, really at that point, it's very just transactional. You're going in, you pay your money, you take the, the, the product off the wall or walk out the door with it. And there's really, really a lack of that, um, you know, that unique experience. And it sounds like you guys have, you know, obviously very quickly identified, Hey, this is, this is the niche we can fill. This is what we can do different. That's going to really separate us. And I, you know, that's fantastic. We also do that with repairs. Okay. When somebody walks in and they have a guitar and they have an instrument, they have any kind of instrument of a violin or something, and they're looking at it and they don't know anything about it. You have to be very conscientious that they, if they're walking at a regular shop, they may be taking an advantage of somebody. You know, oh, somebody sure. might take advantage yeah. of them and say, oh, this is going to be 150 or $200 or a $300 repair. And you have to be kind and loving of this person like yeah. you would if they were the, your grandmother. You know, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to go through and say, all right, it's, it needs to do strings, but the, but the violin is only worth this much. So let's put on a $16 pair of strings instead of a 50 or a hundred dollar set of strings. Let's, let's clean it up and make it look good and sound good. You could play yeah. it and then you could listen to it. We can always go nicer later, but at least you'll get it started and they don't spend a fortune doing that and then yeah. they'll come back and then they go, well, I've got another instrument in my closet and I've got another one here and I've got another one here. We had somebody bring in two ukule uh, two mandolins last night for us to, to do. Yeah. And that's great. You have somebody bringing in both their instruments, which is yeah. pretty nice. You don't have somebody bringing in just one, you have bringing two, which is great revenue. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, it sounds like that that has really been kind of the calling card for Enum Claw Music is yes. really providing uh, providing that level of service, and um, that's what you have to do, right? That's what you've got to do to be successful. So um, I'm curious. So I asked you about um, you know uh, challenges that you did foresee, and, and you quickly identified well the internet is you know the, the whole online selling that's going to be a challenge for us. What about what about things that surprised you as you as you you know, took over ownership. What are some of the things that surprised you about uh, being a store owner, um, the industry, um, the customers, anything like that? What, what was surprising to you? Um, I know I didn't expect, I didn't expect the amount of actual background work that needed to be done. That, that was really a headache for, for me 
Uh, my niece is here helping, but there is a tremendous amount of background work that needs to be done. Talk, talk about that a little bit. We have a, we have a lot of stores that watch the podcast or listen to the podcast that are, that are contemplating starting a, a business. Talk, talk about w- what are some of those specific things that you're, that you're, that you're well, mentioning here? Let's, let's, let's start, start. The taxes. Holy crap. <laughs> let's, uh, Uncle Sam. How about that? Uh, we live in Washington and we oh, have, boy. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And we yep. have a few different kinds of taxes. But it's not just that. It's not just that. It's it's every item in our store is has a barcode on it. All right. So you have to keep track of of you have to put make sure that everything's barcoded and everything has the right price on it. Well, you can't just change the price in the computer. You have to go out and make sure that the barcode is right on the labels yeah. that are on the and you can't put and you got to make sure that all the labels are right and all the products are right in the, you know, on the right spot. Mm -hmm. People move products all the time. I wasn't in retail. I didn't, I didn't know that you were in retail before. I don't know retail. People move stuff all the time. Oh my gosh. People move, take, take the tags off of guitars all the time. And I'm walking or violins or, drum sets or anything else they take tags off all the time and or they fall off and they're going and they walk up and say how much is this and i'm going what do you mean how much is this i don't know <laughs> no. or something <laughs> as simple as um doing purchase orders if if you know if something ends up not shipping or whatever you have to go back and make sure that all everything is priced right or if you got a discount that wasn't on the sales order or you know and all of these things just take time and um and making sure that we're going through um and all of our our services are being shown and have good descriptions in them so people can see and it's all this these little things that are kind of behind the scenes that nobody really realizes. And we have an amazing Danielle. Our Danielle is our back office manager. And I told her that she's not allowed to leave when I take over um, because (laughs) I need her because she is the glue that keeps us all together because she takes, she is phenomenal at the back end things and can just whip them out. um, And, and, me coming into this and seeing not only the retail side of things, but also the back end of things in becoming a business owner. Um, I think your team is highly important. Yeah. Your team and the systems that you have in place systems for these things is essential because Correct. otherwise you're going to Correct. run yourself into the ground. Um, you're going to work. Yep. 102 hours every week. Me. Um, sometimes you like doing that, but and and we have a very little town and a lot of very small business owners here. And and when you step into that role, you know you're going to be probably putting in more than your normal, you know, 40 hour because you have right. a passion for it. It's yeah. because you you want to give something back. You have a love for this. And so you're willing. So I think that that was a little interesting for me to see is how much happened behind the scenes to make everything run. Okay. Out here in the front. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just open up a a candy stand or something like that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Nope. And and especially when you have five parts of our business, you have the rentals, Luckily, the rentals run by themselves, but they still occasionally will have, you know, an overdue that doesn't, you have to make a phone call on. So you have to monitor those. You have lessons, you have classes where you've got to monitor those. You have repairs, which we've got to, luckily, Music, uh, Music Shop 360 has a list of what needs to be done and we can track what needs to be done. We can text people which is easier. Oh my gosh. I, I do just a little bit of a shout out to music shop 360 for that. When I started here with the work orders, I was frustrated. Um, yeah. 
coming from a warehouse manager position background, I made sure there were things that, that David had no idea would be helpful. And I was like, hey, we need to be doing these type of things with our work orders. And I had gone into the comments area where you can suggest a feature and things like that. And other people have been suggesting things. And the new way that the work orders are, oh my gosh, has made our lives a million times easier. That's great. It's That's great and, and it's made us be able to track, you know, getting a hold of customers and things like that because our repairs are an essential part of our business, but yeah. we're, we don't have a dedicated repair person. So yeah. we're doing repairs in between helping customers and things like that. So it's, it, we have to keep track of who's doing what, who took yeah. it in and things of that nature. So those little things, I really, I think my expertise was able to come and help um, just enhance what we do here. Yeah, and communication for anybody starting a new business, communication oh. between yeah. between anybody Everybody. that works at the business is incredibly important. Yep. And yeah. you have to have things written down. Um there's so many things that happen. So a customer will come in and and say something and you'll need to do something about it. You've got to write it down and pieces of paper don't work. You've got yeah. to have to You'll lose them you, all yeah. the time. You lose them all the time. So you you need work orders to be able to put that stuff down. You need special orders to be able to put them in as soon as the customer comes in. And you need to get the money from the special order as soon as the customer comes in. So you yeah. get all that information and you need to make sure that the when you do take a special order or a work order, you get you make sure that you have the customer read the receipt to make sure their phone number is right. Those little processes, I never knew when I started. Yeah. Every once in a while, you'd have a customer that brought something in and you'd write down their phone number and their phone number would be wrong. Yeah. So yeah. there's, it would be great. You, it, you know, there's just, there's so many things that we know, you know, that, you know, and we know that would be nice just to write down and yeah. know, okay, here's all the things you kind of need to know about these things to do in Music yeah. 360 that you, you know, you kind of need to know to do these things because if you do these things, you're not going to get as messed up as, as we've all been messed up before. Yeah. You know, we've all lost instruments in our store and a customer has come in and said, we've done it. We brought a repair in and we look at them and go, where's the instrument? And we go, I don't know where the instrument is. We'll be back to you in a bit. You know, yeah, things yeah. That just can't happen. Yeah. Um, you, you know, again, you mentioned something really interesting there. You have four, four employees. Um, you're a full service music store. Um, so you've got the retail side, work orders, lessons, rentals, uh, you name it, you guys are doing it. Um, that's really not feasible for four people to do. You've got to have really fantastic systems and policies yeah. and procedures in place if you're going to get this thing off the ground, it sounds like you guys have learned that lesson and, and uh, done well with it, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is great. Um, I, I did also want to ask, so you had mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that um, one of the things that has evolved is consumer behavior. You know, they're coming in with phones, they'll scan a barcode, try to find it elsewhere, have you price match it. Um, you know, you've got, again, uh, a plethora of, of retailers on the internet. Um, tell me, tell me a little bit about your online efforts. So I know you guys sell on your website, um, rentals on the website, you guys are doing reverb. Tell me, tell me about some of the successes that you've had there. So I, um, David and I like to fight about this side of things, wow. um, because David loves his computer. He comes from a computer I background, um, and I—they're friendly. They are not. 
And I'm a people person. I love people. So he and I kind of, cla- you know, we're constantly going back and forth as to where to put our energy, you know, of um, the the face-to-face contact or the, or the online. Um, but I will say that we get some pretty cool, weird instruments in here. Um, for lack of a better word. Um, We just got a tipple yesterday. It's a consignment. Mm. I didn't even know what a tipple was. Um, And those things we're able to, uh, we had this beautiful horn that was an old 1920s Getson trumpet. Um, And things like that, we're able to take reverb and and reach people all over the nation that are looking for a specific yeah. item. Um, I was even, we were even able to help one of our clients looking for a very specific saxophone. Yes. And I was able yes. to reach someone across the nation to be able to satisfy that need. And I think that that's, that's more of what we use our online presence for. That's is, awesome those unique instruments that we get in as consignments or we, somebody's right. like, my dad just passed away. I found this in the attic here. Um, yeah. Cause we do get that. And it's more of that thing as well as, as like David said, just a couple of days ago, we had that dad who, or that grandpa who lives across the country, but grandson lives here. So yeah. I think that that's honestly a lot cause we can't, we absolutely cannot compete with Sweetwater or Guitar Center for yeah. the online product brand new presence. But we can yeah. absolutely have a different service available, you know, and customer service available for our clients, as well as those those unique instruments um, and utilizing reverb and things like that, as well as the yeah. rent. Right. The rentals have the rentals really helped people, people just on go website. online and they're able to rent yeah. a, a, a violin. We get it ready for them. They come in, they pick it up. I mean, we're in a convenience age, right? We want. Yeah, exactly. You know, and they don't have to wait. They've already done everything and we need them to sign the paperwork and they walk out and we're all honky dory. Everybody's happy. Yep. yep. Yeah, you've got it. Well, that's uh, that's great. Uh, that's really awesome feedback. And we and, also uh, yeah. we also keep just on our on our website. We've got it turned on so it just shows what's in stock. Yeah. So yeah. we don't show every all the items we have. We just show what's in stock. So when yeah, people so, look at it, they can see yes, you do have this in stock. Yeah. And they'll come in and say, I, you know, you have this on your website that's in stock. Can I get one? And yeah. very rarely do they call that they come in and say, you have one of, you know, you have one of these on your website. I come in to get it. I did have somebody come in and call and say, you know, they came in and looked for a, a heart key amp and we didn't have it. But that's hmm. just because we didn't have it. I mean, it, yeah. it, things get sold. But yeah. the point is, is that it, it's so it's so nice to have that uh, instant, instant availability of inventory on our website. That helps yeah. a ton because people, if you're looking for a book or you're looking for something, you can look on our website, see if it's there, it is there, and then they'll come down and pick it up. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, boy, you really um, hit it right on the head there. I mean, that's what we see time and time again is the real value of having the website fully integrated with the in-store inventory and the in-store point of sale is for exactly what you're talking about. Your customers know when they go on your website, if they see it on your site that it's in stock, they can walk through your doors today and then get that personal experience that they're looking for. Uh, which, which is great. So they get the benefits of the online side, just, you know, getting the basic feelers out there, seeing what's available. 
but then they can actually walk through the door. So, yeah, you'll have your online transactions. People will buy online. That's, you know, those are all kind of just natural consequences of, of having an online presence. But what we really see is an uptick in foot traffic through the physical doors because people have seen things on your website and, and know that you have it in stock. But they do want to get that personal selling experience. Right, yeah, really right, about. right, right, yeah. yep. Um, shifting gears a little bit, um, I wanted to ask a little bit about um, about vendors and vendor management. So uh, we've gone through a really interesting time, as you guys know, with the, the pandemic. It really led to a backlog of back orders, right? Vendors not being able to fulfill orders, not taking, a, taking additional orders from from stores because they knew they weren't going to be able to fulfill them, um, while at the same time seeing a huge spike in in uh, interest of uh, you know new players and people who are just beginning to learn instruments and uh, getting invested in that, um, how have you navigated some of the supply chain issues that have gone on over the, the course of the last um, you know, uh, twenty four months? Oh my gosh, our, our just the last. I'll let Michelle talk most about this, but the thing that's getting me the most is the changing in prices. The changing yeah. in every single PO that comes in, we're changing. It used Cost. to be five years ago, we'd buy we'd buy from our vendors and the price would be the same. And we'd yeah. put the product out. The price would be the same. We'd put the product out. Now it's you've got to go back and change the default cost so that people can see what the default, co- the you know, the people at the register can see what the default cost is. And you've got yeah. to go back and change it. And then you go through and recalculate <laughs> margin and make sure that we've got the right price on things because yeah. some things are going up a dollar. You know, guitar strings are going up a dollar and I'm going, holy cow. Yeah. Now we've got to raise the guitar strings up a buck. Well, and I yeah. think that with the, uh, when I came in, here, um, I didn't have the responsibilities that I did. Um, but I was able to kind of see, and, um, one thing that we, one way that we did things differently during the pandemic is I actually started bringing in new products. Um, that helped. We brought in, uh, new names. We brought in PD, um, to give us an electric, side of things we brought in happy toys um only their musical instruments because i we had younger siblings coming in with their kid their their older siblings for lessons and wanting to play they wanted to do their own so um i think the biggest thing is is first of all grace we had to have grace it was across i mean people when people would come in and get frustrated that we didn't have something, I would just simply yeah. remind them the grocery store is out of stuff too. We are dealing with the same problems that everywhere yeah. else is. And people, yeah. after a little bit of time, I think they saw that everywhere is having this problem, yeah. um, that it's okay. But one of the biggest things is my relationship with our vendors. I dropped some vendors that didn't communicate with me. And um, that was huge because we had no idea when things were coming or what was happening. And that made an additional stressor. So I think that not only having that relationship with your clientele, but having that same type of relationship with your vendors um, is key too. I, and, and having, having, I mean, we have one gentleman that, you know, he's got about 50% of the products that we we have in here um, and the different names because of the relationship that, that we created and him going above and beyond for me um, during the pandemic and making sure, I mean, we had one product that it took a year to get in here and every month he was like, okay, this is where it's at. No, wait, this is where it's at. And, and that communication was there. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, certainly been an interesting time. This is a, a little bit off script, but uh, I'm just just curious. Um, you know, we did see a really big spike. Retail stores saw a really big spike in um, new players. You know, people just getting interested, like I like I talked about. Um, 
how sticky do you think those those uh, those customers are going to be? Do you do you feel like those people are are going to start moving into maybe some more advanced instruments or uh, you know um, um, higher end products or um, do you think those guys are sticking around? You have to get them tied to you with lessons. One yeah. of the things that we do is if you buy a ukulele of a specific value or a violin or a guitar or any other instrument, you are automatically dropped into a class for free. Our group class. Oh, wow. it's not the, wow. Our lessons with our teachers are, are different. They, they are yeah. subcontractors. But our group classes, you get a free class. And that's, for that's one great. month, one hour classes usually with David because he teaches everything yeah, once a week you get you get uh, you get a, a month worth of classes they're once a week so you get either four or five classes and you start to learn your instrument which builds a relationship with the yeah. customer on that instrument and they also can come in and they look at the other instruments every day and yeah. they see, Oh, I've got a nice, there's a nicer call a ukulele there. Oh, there's a nicer call a ukulele there. And we got this weird policy where we allow customers to take nicer instruments into classes. Oh, really? So if you, if you want to play, if <laughs> we do this all the time, <laughs> the little kids, the, yeah. the girl, the, I, we've got, yeah, we just had a girl that came into a class two weeks ago who got to play an electric guitar, and we've got this PV special that we're doing. And she got to go in and play this electric guitar through this really nice $500 amp, and she just loved it. Wow. So, and and she, she didn't have an electric guitar. So, yeah. And, and the key was, is that she got an, she was playing electric guitar. So, and she was in this class. So she got to play it during this class. And then she put it back on the wall. Well, she took her acoustic guitar home and practiced the whole week. And her mom saw that she really wanted it. And she came back and the next week and the mom bought the uh, electric guitar and an amp oh, wow. and a guitar cord and a strap and all those kinds of things. And then yeah. we also allow you to be able to bring your instrument back and trade up. Oh, that's yeah. great. So and we also have a, you can play with anything you want as long as you don't put it in your mouth policy. That's yeah. true. So anybody can come in and play with anything they want, but the but with our rent to own program and our trade in program, I mean, that allows parents to be able to. So one of the things that really meant a lot to me when I started here and, and why I kind of attached to, to David here was um, being a mom of four children. Um, the idea of purchasing instruments for my kids was really daunting. And yeah. the thought of, of putting in money and renting this instrument and never actually getting that instrument hurts your heart. But we, our program yeah. is rent to own. And yeah. at any point in time during that rental, the, the parent can come in and trade in that, that rental instrument and trade up and we'll apply that credit. And I think that that's what keeps clients coming back because even if they've they've done their rental and let's say it's you know they've paid off their rental the the kid's been playing it for a year and and they say hey we purchased this with the rent to own about a year ago we do trade it and so that's what yeah. keeps our clientele at, you know coming back to Very us so. because they've created that specific relationship Cool. Um, I, I did want to kind of go back. I know um, I kind of sidetracked us asking that question about uh, continuing to to develop your customers and their skills and that sort of thing. But um, this this question is really intended to kind of help some of the new stores who are just getting started out or thinking about getting started out. Um, how do you guys decide what you want to sell? Is it is it um, you know we want to sell things we're passionate about, or we think uh, you know this line's going to sell really well, or is it a mix uh, of that? Or what's that decision making process as far as 
this is what we're going to provide for our customers. This is what we're going to offer. That's an awesome question. The customers usually demand that. The customers will come in and say, do you have any of these? Do you have any of those? Do you have any of these? And we'll go, oh, we don't have any of those. Should we, maybe we should carry some of these. Yeah. And if we get enough requests, we'll start carrying them. And okay. if the product, uh, we do, so one of the things when I started taking over the buying, um, again, not being from a, a musical background other than my voice, which uh, is not for sale, um, <laughs> the uh, we would bring a product in and David would really kind of assess how things went. And I now, I mean, I can now tell him, I was like, we'll bring in a product. And I'm like, okay, David, two months. Two months before people really know we have it yeah. and the sales will start coming through yeah. and we'll carry it. And you know what? We've decided to not carry certain things because, you know, people are always bringing them in for repairs. They're, they're, you know, yeah. they, they break all the time or, you know, or our customers. It is really led by our clientele more than, um, Oh, we think this is going to do really well. The other thing yeah. is you being a small place, we can't carry things like Gibson and Fender. We, yeah. We, yeah, we, we can't, can't, we can't buy in. It's too expensive. So finding yeah. other quality instruments like Schecter, PV, um, Teton, Kala, that really helps a lot. Yeah. The other thing That's that helps true. too is to find a, a, a vendor like we have done and uh, to find a vendor like we have done, and um, we have a salesperson that does a lot of our business around here, and he works for, he does sales for multiple different stores, and he comes in and says, this is selling. Even or this the is big selling. box, like he's got like the big box guitar center and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So it really that's makes helpful. a difference. Yeah, that, that's really helpful. Um, we're going to wrap up just a couple more uh, questions for you. Um, one, a little bit about us, and then um, two, a little bit about you. So um, tell me how Music Shop 360 has uh, benefited the store. Um, one of the big ways that it helps me from a management perspective is that I don't have to um, go into our employees and say, uh, we got to work harder. We got to work harder. We got to work harder because they look at the margins report and we've set a goal for them of a certain That's amount great. of money per day. Yeah. And it's amazing because we can look back and even Michelle will come out and say, our margins report is this much. We're at this much per day for this month. And it's really nice because everybody knows that and it's visible to everybody and everybody yeah. sees it. If we're at two hundred to two hundred dollars a day today for profit, and we're that way for four or five days, we're going to reduce hours. We got problems. Yeah, we got problems. Right. So it's really easy for the employees to see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And again, like I think the work orders um, has been a huge thing. The rentals, the rent to the own, rent to own stuff that. Helps. That is so automated that it's a one and done. We no yeah. longer have to worry about it at all. It it just, it flows. It functions. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that very, very much. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, excited to be partnering with you. And uh, I think we've been working with you for a number of years now, four years, I think. And, uh, yeah. and it's been great. So, yeah, we really appreciate being able to work for you. Um, tell, tell everybody a little bit about your store, where they can find you, your hours, your website, what they can expect when they come in to see you. Um, t tell everybody about that. Good. We're, we're Edom Claw Music. We're in Edom Claw, Washington. We service the, the South Seattle area, anything that's in South King County and North, uh, North Pierce County. Um, we also, uh, we're open 10 to 8, Monday through, fr Monday through Saturday which is interesting for a small store. Yeah. Um, but we have a lot of restaurants around here and we service the restaurants, the people that are walking around for the restaurants. We're also open on Sunday, one to five. And we get a lot of business on Sunday too. 
Um, and we usually, we have a repair person here, um, usually seven days a week. Like I yeah. said, mo all of us employees, except for our back office girl, we all do repairs. Um, oh, so right. we do repairs. We've got group classes, uh, homeschool and in the mornings and then classes in the afternoons for everybody else and all ages. And we teach on everything uh, here. We do not teach harmonica. Or accordion. Or accordion. So everything else you cover. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Pretty much everything else is covered. Yep. And we are a rinky dinky town, not in a bad way. We're kind of that Hallmark town. And it's yes. really nice because because we get a lot of we're right on the base of the Cascades. So we get a lot of uh, people from Seattle. We get skiers and things like that. So it's a nice yeah. destination place. That's that's awesome. Uh, tell everybody uh, your web address, your website. It's www.enumclawmusic.com. And they can find your Reverb store on Reverb.com and it's Enumclaw yep. Music on Reverb. Yep, it's Enum Claw Music on Reverb. And we just opened a music foundation. Um, we just, six months ago, got our um, business with uh, Washington State, and it's Enum Claw Music Foundation. And we donate, um, we are able to give classes to, child, to kids um, regardless of their financial ability to pay. Oh, wow. So wow. Um, that's a, a new thing that we've just established, too. That's awesome. goes goes back to the exact reason why you why you both uh, gotten into the business is uh, sharing the love of music and the education side. Mm -hmm. so, yep, that's great. Well, we uh, we really appreciate your time today. Um, yes, everybody, thank you. go out and visit uh, Enum Claw, and uh, they'll provide you a really fantastic uh, experience. If you're looking for a new instrument, lessons, uh, you need to get something to repair, check them out. They're going to do a fantastic job for you. And thanks for stopping in. All right. Yep, have a great you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Music Shop. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a rating or a review to let us know what you think. For more interviews with business owners, visit musicshop360.com slash interviews, where you'll find transcripts, show notes, and videos for all our episodes.